move your hands, if you please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The school board will convene the closed session tonight to consider the employment promotion compensation performance evaluation data of any public employee who is just making body in jurisdiction or exercises responsibility in this kind statute 19.85 for C to approve the minutes of the special school board meeting on November 20th, 2023 and um, to discuss the superintendent self-evaluation. Then we um, will begin with the National Honor Society presentation. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sam Harrell. I'd like to thank all of you for having me here tonight to represent the National Honor Society. I'm the Vice President of our chapter this year, um, and hopefully a bit later, um, Ezra Lanan, the President, will be joining me. Um, so just to preview what I'm going to cover in this presentation, first I'm going to go over the four pillars of NHS, which is what we stand for and strive to uphold. And I'm going to go over some of our service projects, including our two big ones, Supper and the Splash of the Fun Room, um, our accomplishments, um, and then also our future aspirations for this program. So starting off with the first pillar of NHS, the scholarship. The essence of scholarship is lifelong learning, where students here in the building, but once we um, get out of here, we're going to continue learning wherever that is at higher institutions or wherever else we go. Um, and NHS really drives that passion to continue learning and pushing ourselves to grow and always contribute with our knowledge to the community. The second pillar is leadership. Leadership is a super, super important pillar of NHS. Um, of NHS as officers, we really strive to uphold this to our to the other members, to the other students in our school, and to the community. Um, a way we've been able to practice this is our weekly meetings. Every Thursday at lunch we meet in Ms. Spence's room um, as a whole chapter and we go over our goals, what we're trying to do, what we've accomplished, um, and then what we need to do. And then these meetings, a change this year we made is that us officers run them rather than Ms. Spence, which is a way for us to practice our leadership. And then in the work of those service projects, we split the work up into as many groups as we need. They could be up to eight to 15, and then those groups are made out of anywhere from three to eight members. Um, sometimes members working in multiple different areas that they get to work on smaller leadership in those small groups and then how to bring that together um, as a large group. Um, and we strive to always reflect all those good characteristics of leadership, such as integrity, um, empathy, respect. Hi, I'm Mesut and I apologize profusely for being late. Uh, the uh, next pillar is service, and this is a pillar that we think we wanted to focus on a lot more this year. Um, in the past, we've had a few smaller service projects, one large one that you might be familiar with, Picking Supper, but this year we kind of wanted to expand on that. And so in October of this year, we actually decided to perform a color fun run. You've probably heard of it. It was a great success. We raised over $4,000 for the Sunshine House and the DI team. And I think that it brings a lot of light to the community, to the NHS, and to these groups that uh, might need a little encouragement and help sometimes that we as an NHS and uh, community can <coughs> explore upon. So service is kind of when you're giving to others and putting, your, putting everyone else above yourself. And I think this is a really important pillar. Um, and we look forward to um, some future aspirations uh, that we'll talk about later that might help further evolve this pillar. And then moving on to the fourth pillar of NHS is character. Something we're super um, grateful to have in our chapter is the different characters of our members. I know our team of officers, we work super well together. We have a variety but specific set of skills. 
Um, I'd like to give props to our other two officers, Elena Shaw and Libby Ash. Elena created this beautiful presentation. She works really hard behind the scenes. Libby Ash is one of our people persons. She's always talking to community members. She has a lot of connections. Um, and then Ezra is great with <laughs> public speaking and reaching out to the big scary business owners and doing those big jobs. And then our other members, I'd like to give props to Kylie Dusler as well who, for the color room. She recruited a bunch of different people, I think like 11 soups and 11 chilies, um, staff and different community members for that color room and chili soup cook-off. And then Julie Ludicky too, she was the questions girl. She was always really making sure we had all those specifics uh, thought out, like for the color run, what about the roads and the police and barriers. She was always making sure that we had everything um, thought out. And that's why character is such an important part of NHS, um, because it really pushes you to be the best that you can be. And then another point I'd like to really emphasize is the positive effects it has on those that you help and oneself. I know that I think it was yesterday we officers in the Spence went to the Sunshine House to present uh, the check of the donation and being able to meet the people when their names and shake their hands. It was super important to see that like our impact really does have an impact and see who exactly is it. So uh, some of the service projects projects that the NHS has put on recently uh, include the Painting Supper, which we performed last spring. This is an annual thing that's been going on for uh, three years uh, this upcoming spring. And it's something that was done a lot in the past and uh, fell off a little bit, but we tried to revive it and bring it to new heights. Um, it was my first experience with the NHS, actually, as a fresh uh, sophomore, sorry. And it was a super fun event for all that were involved. I mean, we got to make food and serve it and see the happy faces of all these people who could just come and be a community. And I think that we raised $1,800 this past year, $1,300 the year before, and we're looking upwards of 2000 this upcoming year, serving over 300, 400 community members, which is an outstanding impact on the community. I think my experience, too, with the Pancake Supper um, its purpose is to raise money for the senior scholarships. Um, the reason we kind of revived this event and brought it back was we got, I think there were some vending machines, which was probably a good health choice, um, but we needed another way to help fund those senior scholarships. So as a sophomore and a junior working these events and uh, a senior, um, I really could like, see how it helped both the community as it's free for the community to come eat and it collaborates with the Fine Arts Fair. Um, but then I also see how it's going to help my friends. And when I'm working at it, I'm thinking, how can I make this event better so that I can help my friends get better scholarships, but then also how can I continue to build this event so that once I'm in that senior position, it's great for myself and my class. The uh, next big fun uh, service project that we perform is the Color Run Walk, as well as the uh, adjoining chili soup and cook up and this is new this year but we hope to uh, improve it get all the technicalities figured out um, for next year and the years to come keep this an ongoing tradition we had over a hundred people actually participate in the race um, there were well over two dozen volunteers that were able to help raise us four thousand dollars and that went um, a fourth of it went to the sunshine house and the other three fourths is going to the di team who could use it for uh, their triumphant bus rides to uh, worlds that they always go on. And I think that this was another project that was super fun to be involved with. Um, it was a little more uh, difficult to kind of just spring upon it, and we uh, started it in October, so it was about a month and a half to two months that we had to plan it, which isn't a ton of time, especially for us new officers just barely getting into the mix of the planning and the taking the lead of all of those things. But it was a, it was such a great event. I mean, it was a little cold, but the runners had fun. The chili was great. We had so many donations. And as my uh, vice president <coughs> said earlier, like the character building that is imposed upon both the people involved and the ones that we impact is outstanding. I mean, the people at the Sunshine House that we visited yesterday, they were just overjoyed and they 
they knew what it felt like to be like included in this community engagement. And that was just something that was riveting. So I'm assuming you had a lot of accomplishments just from those two service acts, but <coughs> experience as a program. Um, some main groups I want to point out is our consistency. As Ezra mentioned, um, when we were elected as officers last spring, we started planning and right away we said we want to have the NHS involved a lot more in a bunch of different areas. Um, so this includes just the small impacts. Um, a couple of times we've held doors in the morning, um, greeting kids, helping the little kids off the bus, um, we ran tours here for the 100 year celebration. And these are smaller ads from those two larger service projects, but they still have a great impact. Um, we've also reached out a bunch. This includes um, just within our school. We've had members go out to classrooms and talk to um, freshmen and sophomores that, and inform them a bit more about what NHS is, and then also help and prepare them for their application um, as second semester sophomores. Um, and then we've also recruited lots of volunteers, not only within our membership, our society, in the school, staff, but also lots of community members. We, for example, the color one, we had like 14 different donors, ranging from Horseshoe Bay to like Get Real Cafe to York County Medical, just a wide range of different impacts. Um, and then our planning in general has gotten a lot better. Like I mentioned, our meetings are a lot more efficient, which helps just the program be a lot better, but then it also helps develop, develop kids um, as, in, as innovators and planners, which are skills that they can take with them um, as they continue with them. Now, with the NHS, we have a lot of um, future ideas. There's a lot of great minds inside of that uh, meeting whenever we all get together, but some of the ones that have stood out is a uh, Sebastopol organization or club fair. We've seen a lot of clubs go through Sebastopol, and uh, we think that there's just some people who might not know about some of these. Um, I, for example, like didn't know about some of the uh, clubs such as the gaming club until I was at least a junior, if not a senior. And I think that if we can get away for all these clubs to make a little presentation and put it in somewhere where all of the grades can see them, especially middle school coming into high school, or even as low as elementary, we can get people excited for these and get them more involved so they can find their little niche in the community. And I think that that's something that NHS can excel within and hopefully provide for these younger generations who be able to come up and fill our shoes and fill their own little part in the community. Uh, we also want everyone in the, in the organization to um, be an active member. This goes for all clubs, but especially the NHS, we feel like some people might just sit in it and then think that their ideas aren't valued. And we really just want to eliminate that completely and see everyone having an impact and being satisfied with what they are contributing to the NHS and to their respective clubs or just anything in the general well-being of the school. I think it creates a great community. It creates a support of a family. And it's something that I want to see done even past my graduation and the further other members uh, here in the NHS. As we wrap up, I know that I find, and I'm sure as we reason, that NHS is super valuable to us. In our high school, we only have a short couple of years, um, but the NHS for me has allowed myself to practice those four important pillars, which extend to all areas of life and other characteristics. Um, and the NHS has been super impactful to myself and the community as just pushing ourselves to be better and help others and create as much as a positive Questions? I know the answer to these, but I'm going to ask you for the benefit of anybody that doesn't know. Mm -hmm. um, how many members do you have and what grades are eligible? Mm -hmm. I think we have around, I'm not sure the exact number of our members, I think it's around 30, and I know that uh, to get into the NHS, you have to be a, so you apply second semester as a sophomore. Mm -hmm. And then at the banquet, that includes the induction banquet, we bring in freshmen. And then tell them a little bit about the application process because... Yes, the application process, um, 
it's much like a college application. I guess the sophomores wouldn't really know much about that, but uh, you kind of build your own resume. You talk about the activities you're in and the service projects that you've already contributed contributed to in high school. And then um, there's an essay, and you kind of just want to express yourself and show what you have to offer the NHS. Because um, while it would be nice if we just had 100 volunteers and everyone was in it, we kind of want um, to select the people who are actually passionate about creating an impact in the NHS. And it makes it more efficient that way. And I think that while it is a little bit of an extensive process, and those, those um, resumes and the essays get viewed by a I believe six teacher panel that will then decide on who should or should not be in the NHS. Um, it creates just a great community and it's a way that we can ex we can honor the students who have really gone out of their way to become great community members and just above all students and family here at the Savannah School NHS. Anybody else with questions? The National Society has a long history at so that. It was started when I was in high school, which was a really long time ago. <laughs> and I think Sue will agree with me in that statement, the bad news is time flies. Yes. The worst news it flies even faster than you can ever imagine. Yes. <laughs> Anybody else have questions or comments for Very them? Good. Okay. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, then we will move on to the 2023 audit presentation. Ryan Hunter is here from Clifton, Larson, and Allen. That's our auditing department. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Ryan Hunter. Um, I'm a CLA. Um, and I've been a senior in charge on the audit for the past three years now, I think. Um, so, I guess just to jump right into things, um, we have two pieces uh, within your packets today. We have the, the full financial statements, which is the larger, um, uh, has a lot more pages, and then we have the executive summary, which I believe is a, a staple packet towards the back of. Um, the handout that we have. So I'm going to focus most of my time on the executive summary, which is um, a high-level kind of summary of all the, the, um, the important details um, from the, finance, the full financial statements. So if I start on page one here, a few pages in on the executive summary. So we, a lot goes into the audit um, through the planning stages, uh, risk assessment, um, the substantive procedures that we come on site for and work with Carl and um, the, the field work that takes place. Um, but our end goal is to come to um, a final conclusion and offer our opinion on um, if the financial statements are fairly stated um, in all material respects. So our audit opinion here is the first line we have on the executive summary. Um, and it, we did issue a clean opinion, which is the highest um, opinion that you should be looking for and um, what has been received in past years. So um, the second kind of part of this is um, our report on internal controls. So we have kind of two pieces to that. So there's the report on internal controls over financial reporting, and then the report on internal controls over compliance. Um, and the compliance piece to that is triggered when the district spends over $750,000 of federal um, money. So I think the past few years now, it's been over that $750,000 threshold. So we take a look at um, federal major programs in addition to the financial statement. Um, so um, I guess in addition to our opinion, um, we, we evaluate the internal controls, um, and then we have findings. So the first two findings we have um, are significant deficiencies, and these are both very common findings that we see um, throughout all the school districts that we audit. I think um, throughout all the school districts we audit in Wisconsin, there's maybe only 
one or two that don't have this first finding, which is the preparation of the financial um, annual report. So that that is there because um, as a service to the district, um, CLA prepares your financial statements um, and all the related disclosures um, within this packet. Um, and that, I guess, if to get rid of that finding, Carl would have to prepare every single page um, of this financial booklet, which just really isn't feasible or cost effective. So that's a, a common finding that we'll see every year and we'll have to continue um, seeing going forward. Um, and then same with this um, finding number two, segregation of duties. Um, that, you know, with the district of your size, again, it's not really cost effective to properly segregate duties between <coughs> Carl and uh, many other staff. So um, that finding, again, is the same as what you've seen in past years and is very common for school district of your size. Um, so then the second piece of these findings are all related to the um, single audit, which is that $750,000 threshold. So we audited two major federal programs this year, which are, um, is the Child Nutrition Program and ESSER. Um, the, all the findings that we have in the fi um, single audit are related to child nutrition, um, which were similar to prior years. Um, and I guess I'll start kind of giving a background on this first one here. There's a, we have a material weakness finding for child nutrition, um, special tests and provisions, and that is due to um, verification of, of free and uh, reduced applications, which I believe we kind of knew that going into the audit, um, and all the, I'm confident those, I guess, the procedures and um, you know all the work that goes into that has been corrected for this coming year. I know there's some staff turnover and things like that that contribute to that, um, but I, I, I feel like we've talked about that um, with Carl and we have solutions going forward there. Um, and then these next two are significant deficiencies, which is a little lower level than a material weakness, and um, that's related to procurement and suspension and debarment. Those two findings are kind of go hand in hand, and they, they relate to um, quotes and verifying if a vendor is suspended or debarred. So um, I think, for example, two of the three quotes that we looked, or two of the three items we tested within child nutrition didn't have quotes. Um, I <coughs> didn't, didn't follow the procurement policy that was in place uh, for the district, or quotes weren't received for those. So that that's where um, we're required to report that. Um, but again, I, I think that we've, we've talked about that, and. Um, you know, with the um, staff turnover and things like that, there has been procedures kind of put in place to, to correct those going forward. Um, do you have any questions at all on any findings? Those so significant, sure. So those two, um, the, the, the child nutrition cluster yep. deficiencies, we didn't have those before, it was just this one time. So last year, I believe there might have been, they, one of those might have been a repeat of last year. Um, and I can double check that too once we get into the, it is in the back of the financial statements. Um, but yeah, I, I believe one of those was a well, let's involved in verifying someone for free because once we get hard enough, I'm getting people to sign up for that because they don't want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, personal information. yeah, I'll kind of go into that a little deeper. That, so, the verification of the free and reduced lunches, the, out of all the applications that are um, sent to the district, DPI requires uh, the district to verify a sample of those to make sure that the students or the applications that are being sent in are, you know, properly, essentially known as lying on those applications. So then the district then goes in and, you know, Ask for income support um, just to verify. I think it's only three applications that need to be done, but um, I think that that process either wasn't documented or um, completed for the year. So then it's that's where it flows through to us. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I can say on that is past person that was in that position was not doing it, and I as myself did not know about it when we went through our food service audit 
very eye-opening and learned a lot of things on that and those things, these things that are significant deficiencies and weaknesses are being done now properly with the new food service director that we have. So those yep. items have been taken care of. Anything else? Okay. Um, so I'll move past the findings there um, and kind of get into the more financial, um, the financial piece of everything. So on page two of the executive summary, we uh, mentioned the general fund balance. So the district does have a very um, healthy uh, unassigned general fund balance. Um, over the past year or the past two years, so I think last year, um, it, we kind of use a benchmark and say that 20 to the district should have um, 20 to 25 percent of general expenditures, um, I guess, saved up with in that fund balance. And the district is at 39 percent. Um, last year was, was, I think, was around 49 percent. So both of those numbers are very healthy, and even with a decrease, I believe that's a, that was a budgeted decrease. So, was 44, 44 left. Yeah, 40, yep, yep. So both of those numbers are both uh, very healthy and over the 20 to 25 percent range. So I think that is a, a very positive thing to, to look at um, you know, for the district. It's a, it's a healthy indicator. Good thing to see. So. Remind me, does 20, 20 to 25 percent power improvement still include the cover us to avoid short term borrowing? I'd like it to be around 30. Yeah. And and that be, yeah that's a it's a hard question to answer because of the way the flow of cash is with the district. Because you only have re revenues in greater than, in, than expenditures three of your 12 months in education. So we need to be a little bit higher than The 30 is good, yeah. 30 is better. And you actually got to have me there. I, have, I was about to mention that later in the presentation I have in here that um, yeah, staying above that number, you have to keep in mind, this is as of June 30th, so, you know, you have to have that money last at least six months, you know, so it's spread out through the year, so you don't have to short-term borrow. So, um, yeah, staying above that is allows you to not short-term borrow and save money um, that way if you're really paying for your interest. So considering the stressors in public education, do you guys eventually think you should recommend higher amounts of that's a, that is a good point. Um, I So that's not really, I guess, a, a CLA. It's kind of an industry standard. I understand. Um, but, but yeah. The industry is facing challenges instead of facing challenges. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, I agree. I think that that probably will have to be looked at in the future and try to, you know, we'll have to keep evaluating as, as things change and the environment is changing. But the, auditors. the auditor doesn't make a recommendation. No, no, the, the industry standard. standard. The rules are I understand right. that the auditors could, should have influence on the regulators who are no. seeing all the books so, in a normal world. Yeah. Well. <laughs> sure, I understand what you're saying, but because you can't get auditors to say, well, we can't. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> so on page three here, this is the governance communication. Letter. So this again just um, communicates all the different things that we go through during the audit. So there were no new accounting policies during the year. Um, there was a new GASB standard um, introduced this year, which is GASB 96, um, subscription-based IT arrangements. So we did go through an evaluation of that throughout the district, and um, we determined that wasn't applicable. There was no agreements that were material, I guess, material, materially significant um, that needed to be implement, implemented there. But that is something that we evaluate every year, and we GASB standards and um, you know, the implementation of that. Um, our next, uh, I guess, piece here is that your financial statements do include a few estimates, and that is the depreciable lines of fixed assets. Um, OPEB liability and that pension um, liability, and that is just a disclosure. Uh, there's estimates within the financial statements. Um, but other than that, we had no difficulties uh, throughout the audit, no corrected mis misstatements or disagreements. Um, everything um, went very smooth. So um, 
that pretty much wraps up the uh, governance communication letter. Uh, so if you turn to page seven on the executive summary, we have some more financial info here, kind of what I was talking about earlier. Uh, so we have a comparison of the district fund balances um, from this year compared to last year. And again, I'm not going to highlight that unassigned balance of 4.6 million compared to one, uh, 5.1 million last year. That was a decrease of about 500,000. Um, but again, that's, that's a, still a healthy balance. Um, and then you do have some restricted items here, whether that be for community service, student activities, um, debt service. Uh, those are required to fall under those categories. And then um, your capital projects fund. So I guess one highlight here too is long-term capital, you know, reserve for long-term capital improvements decreased from 1.5 million to about 100,000. But again, that was expected and spent down with um, all the capital projects that have taken place over the past couple of years. So. Um, and again, yeah, here I, I wanted to mention that short-term borrowing is, I mean, you do have that to, if you keep that you know, balance up, you um, save yourself from having a short-term borrowing. Right. So that pretty much covers all of the executive summary that I wanted to go through. Um, I have a couple of items that I wanted to touch on within the full financial statements if you want to flip over to your larger book right here. Um, on page 11, I believe. So page 11 here, um, I guess, gives the best financial picture, I would say, um, of the district. So this statement of revenues, expenditures, and changes in your fund balance, um, it's laid out by funds, so your major funds here, your general fund, debt service, and then your other, other governmental fund, fund column is made up of many of your non-major funds. Um, but again, you can kind of, this gives you a better picture of your revenues and expenses within the general fund, and um, I guess how, how that played out during the year. Um, and you can see again that 500,000 um, decrease in fund balance, but again, I believe that was very similar to budget um, than expected. Any questions at all on, on this? So I just wanted to highlight this footnote. This is your um, long-term obligations footnote. Um, it covers your debt um, and lease liabilities. So I feel like this is a, um, a, one of the most helpful footnotes I guess, that we have um, in the disclosures. It kind of lays out um, your, your outstanding debt, what's due in the next year, um, and then gives you a, a, a long-term schedule of your debt payments from now until um, the, the debt matures in 2030. So um, I guess I just wanted to, to highlight that and I guess any, any questions at all with debt or anything there? It's 2039, you mentioned the last year. 2037 yeah, after this last payment, correct? Well, um, that wouldn't have been on this because well, yeah, we did that in October. Well, right. So we did a defeasance. Oh, defeasance, okay. So that'll be on next year's <coughs> audit, yep. next year's numbers, right. Yep. right? Okay, so yeah, that will change. Yeah, but again, this is a, as of June 30th, so that'll change. That'll change next year. Um, and then on this next page, is about page 24 here, this kind of gives you uh, a, a snapshot of um, the district's legal debt margin and um, you know, how much debt, how, what you have available um, through statutory limits to available to borrow. Obviously, you don't, don't want to hit that max at all ever, but there, you, I feel like you are in a good position um, debt-related, especially with all of the 
the projects that you've done over the past couple of years. So. And then I have to go to towards the end here. I guess I just, I, I mean, everything else kind of throughout that, um, throughout the rest of the financial statements, you have a lot of your, your pension and OPEB notes, which are significantly large notes that I'm not going to go through. You can read through those um, on your own time if you'd like. Um, those describe, those kind of show your, your proportionate share of pension OPEB. Um, and then again, there's a fund balance note back there that we already went through. Um, and then your uh, non-major fund and budget schedules are also towards the back of financial statements. But that, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover so far. I guess um, I, I just wanted to thank Carl again. I feel like he's, he's been great to work with over the past few years. Um, and it's always you know, enjoyable to come here. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to um, keep working with the district. So. Um, if you have any other questions for me, I can answer them. Otherwise, yeah, that is all I have. Questions? No, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Is it best to have? Please. Okay, we'll move on to guest comments. A note on guest comments our policy allows for each speaker speak for a maximum of three minutes. Um, Mr. Mr. Bolton, will you keep time? Yep. Yeah, I'll be right back. Thank you. So, um, the first, Samantha, did you want to speak to it? To something? Uh, you're, you're yes here. Huh? You're yes. So, oh, uh, you've done your, you've Talk for it. I just that was what you wanted yeah. to talk on. Yeah. We're just going to Okay. There's nothing else you want to talk about. Okay, bye. Um, then we will move to Lucas Long. Uh, sir, do you want to wait for Carl here? Um, you wait? Can someone else kind of time? You can wait. It's, it's no, it's okay. One, someone else will do the time. I got a question. Go ahead. Since my family's here, can I have them all come up? All, we're all together each person, each, on the same each subject. Each person that signed up, Lucas, some, Melissa, yep. yep, that's my and wife. Wes, that's each my son. signed up to speak, so each of you can have three minutes. Okay, can we all come up together and then the best so you each stand together as long yeah. as you kind so of you want to stand for three minutes just to keep the rules kind of yeah yeah i mean i'll i'll speak right? first and then i'll kind of hand it over to her instead of us you know yep. okay. constantly coming up sure that's all good i didn't understand well oh, i'm sorry yeah. i'm new to this team so we'll start you now <laughs> Sorry, I had to put this together on very short notice. Hi, my name is Lucas Long, my wife Lewis Long, my son Wes. We are here tonight to support our son, Wes Long, who was tagged for a violation of the school dress code. We are opposed to the president being not wearing a t-shirt, sweatshirt with his logo on it. B, if he doesn't have, he will face suspension or threatened by other things playing, not be able to play football next year. His, li his logo consists of the business name Big Richard's Lawn Care Service, the American flag, and his phone number. Big Richard has been a nickname of his for several years, given to him by friends, family, and whatnot. Uh, in the last year, his height has increased approximately four or five inches, which happens to a 15 year old boy. Uh, back to the days of being me, and me being in school, uh, I was never referred to by my legal name either. It was always a nickname. My name was Howie. My daughter's name was Little Howie. All right. Wes has had his lawn care business for approximately five years. Uh, my wife and I have also transported him to various jobs with equipment to do his lawn care business duties. Um, many friends, clients, and students of other school districts have purchased these t-shirts, sweatshirts, to help 
him advertise his business. As of September, he wore his business t-shirt and photographed for the school's power service or power school program. He continued to wear his t-shirt sweatshirt during the months of September, October, November, up until now, two weeks ago, suddenly the logo became a violation of the school's dress code. I feel when he wore the sweatshirt back at the start of the school, if it would have been caught right away, this won't be an issue that we'd be discussing tonight. But since he has been wearing it on multiple occasions, multiple friends have been also wearing the same hoodie sweatshirt. Nothing has been asked of them, dress coded as of until now. Uh, I don't believe that's offensive in any way. His, his hoodie brings offense to anyone. Because they can violent, vulgar, rude. Uh, and on the ending thing, I also believe that anyone with the first name of Richard, John, Johnson, or Peter, whether it be a given name or a nickname, is offensive. And I don't believe the American flag is offensive. Certainly, I don't believe the phone number on his shirt is offensive. And I am just asking for him, friends, family, other business owners who wear his hoodie, sweatshirt, whatever, with his logo on, to be able to continue wearing his business t-shirts, shirts, sweatshirts, without repercussion, yes. and without the school, or be able to wear the school's school events, whatnot. And I believe it's a, it would be a violation of the First Amendment rights. Thank you. Any questions or any thing we'll, on? Um, we'll throw up our we'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll I guess I don't and then wrap with I guess I don't questions. need to speak. I guess you got everything you got everything else. I mean unless you want to speak. The only other things we can go through is some of the points or whatever. Uh sign of the issue. Oh. Okay. So, uh, My name is Alyssa Long. I bought this mom who gets this wife. Um I also support my son and his business and his sweatshirt. Um, we did ask people to sign a form with the logo on there if it was offensive or if it hurt anybody's feelings or took away from his business in any way, shape, or form. And we had very good support. And I think out of everybody that we asked, we only had two people that wanted to sign. Out of neighbors, friends, families, school districts, anywhere from Certain Bay, Southern Door, Gibraltar, all the way down to the Green Bay District. Okay, we can, you, you may, we can ask clarifying questions, but we may not discuss, and there, we can't make a decision at this point in time. So does anybody have questions they want to ask? $1,000 
anonymous donation for the food drive last month. And the Max and Neil Laird Educational Fund gave $5,000 to the Outdoor Education Experience and $500 to Robotics. So thank you so much to those. I will just say that I was listed as meeting in attendance on the November 15th meeting and I was not. I was assist another school if they were had an emergency at their school. So where that what it means is how we reunify kids with their parents or you know and guardians. So we're moving along. It was it's been a slow process, but in the month of January we're kind of picking up some steam where we're actually going to go to a reunification site. We're going to bring all of the equipment and materials and set it up to make sure that really we would have what we would need if we had to assist another school district. And then in later in January, we're actually going to do a drill. You know, so that's all being um, worked with um, Sturgeon Bay School District. They're organizing a lot of it. But our members on our reunification team are going to participate in both of those activities. So if it were to happen that we would have to respond, then we would know that we're doing everything we can to ease the process. So does that even so you may ask about it? Communications gear and all the databases and all of it, and all to contact all the parents and all that kind of stuff. That's what you're talking about. Absolutely. Kind of what supplies we need. Yeah. You know, we have a site. The way we set it up is it adequate? I mean, it's a drill to see if all the work that we put in is actually if it's if it's accurate and if it's going to work. Does that include like, or is there a different plan? Let's say one of the schools on the peninsula, the electrical line got cut and it's going to be down for a week. No. How do you handle those students no, this throughout is, the school? I or they have a major home they have a major fire. Fire, if we had to if if students had to leave the building. No, no, no. Fire meaning the building no, is that up. No. So you don't do you have a plan like that? I think Sebastopol would come up with their own individual plan. Do we take have that on as it came This is for yeah. our fifty back with the building. Oh, yeah. So yeah. one of the four districts had to. So I'm gonna, I'm sorry, I guess so would that be a good thing to have? Since we're in this island out here, and everybody's dependent on, if for some reason, I think it's a, yeah, I think it, you, you make a good what point. To, what yeah. to do? It's because we read all over the country, those storms sure. or sure. things like that, whack, wipes out a school or a large portion of school. Sure. You're not going to be able to use this facility for Sturgeon Bay. What are they going to do with the students' so education process? So I just throw that out there as something. No, I appreciate that. That's something we can definitely discuss. Uh, uh, some type of a disaster. Disaster. Absolutely. Disaster. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Any other questions for Ms. Heinrich? Are we due for the five-year non-discrimination report this year for the new plan? We did that, right? We did it. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. We'll move to Mr. Hill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the item I'd like to draw attention to is the poverty simulation that we did. Um, thank you to Sue today for uh, giving us the name of Judy Knudsen who put on that simulation. Um, it was an outstanding uh, session that we ran during our in-service. Um, I describe it as our staff going from being sympathetic to the issue to being empathetic. Um, there were a couple of examples that were brought up during that day. Uh, one, for instance, is if you have a budget that you're working from, uh, oftentimes food is the last thing that you pay for. Uh, you take care of all of your other needs, your bills, those kind of things because those aren't going away um, and you try and find food uh, in different ways, whether that's going to a uh, food pantry or uh, trying to figure out other ways that, you can get that, uh, that has more flexibility to it. Um, um, so there was that. I know there's a lot of discussion afterwards that morning, even over the course of the weekend. 
um, to kind of highlight some of the thought process that went into that. Uh, I had a teacher who came to me and talked about our uh, supply list, for example. And one of the things that our conversation led to was the idea of having the teachers go through and uh, figure out how much each of those items cost. It's one thing to you know, say, well, I'm going to pare down my list, but to really look at the cost of those items, how important they are relative to that cost, um, and knowing how much we're charging families for those things. So um, it really did have a big impact. Uh, we continue to have that as one of our main points of emphasis with our staff, and uh, we'll continue to the forefront. So thank you for very most of it. I have a new um, respect for teachers. My role was a middle school, high school teacher. And I think the things that come to teachers in the classroom, it's problems. I think it would, it would be hard to get through those problems the kids are having and get any teaching done. Because if you have a big heart, you want to solve the problem. So, is it good? I'll second that because I think the public as a whole doesn't realize all the societal problems they talk about land on your desk every day and impact your ability to teach and the students' ability to take information. He said that, Mr. Schaefer. I uh, just uh, touching base with a couple of items. Uh, last week we had Mike McGowan who works with all the Dark County Schools uh, and uh, primarily works through our Project 180 groups. Uh, he goes to all four uh, Dirt County schools, and he was here at Sebastopol last week. He met with um, our Project 180 group first, and uh, the other Project 180 groups from all the other Dirt County schools for two hours. And then he comes in, and uh, we have an opportunity as all administrators from all the schools to kind of talk about agenda items, what's important, what's happening in our schools. And then he uh, went back and then spent time with uh, you know, each individual grade level independently, which was really cool because each grade level, he had a, a separate agenda and what they wanted to talk about, which was student driven. Um, I met with the Project 180 group the day before and we were kind of talking about some of the issues that were pressing and he just created a great space for uh, those types of conversations to happen. And it was a, a very positive uh, outcome. And then the great thing that he does is when it's all said and done, he gives a a reflection of his experience, what was his takeaway from our classes, what were the issues that are pressing to our students, so that we can keep moving forward and um, paying attention to those and, and seeing where we can improve and what areas are important to not only our students but teachers and, and collectively working to improve that. Uh, second thing that was uh, uh, pretty awesome, our eighth graders uh, yesterday had an opportunity to, to go on apprenticeship day at uh, NWTC in Sturgeon Bay. Um, they had a chance to learn what an apprenticeship is and why they're important to the businesses that were there. Uh, the, big, the big five trade unions that were there were pipe fitters, electricians, laborers, millwrights, carpenters. Uh, students got to learn about what kind of job they would be doing in each area. They got a hands-on experience in that. And overall, with the exposure to the trades, uh, students in eighth grade got to learn how the uh, apprenticeship program could also be another pathway they wanted to get involved in the trade. So it was a real positive experience. And of course, uh, you know, noted our students were excellent. There were a lot of other schools there as well. Our students were awesome and it was a great positive experience. And then just a quick one today, we had seven students from Gibraltar visit our CNC program. We had seven students from Sebastopol visiting our CNC program. Uh, Garrett Soule did a great job of meeting with all them and, and reviewing the program. It was a very positive experience. Questions for Mr. Hills? When they review the trades, do they look the loan with the financial? Yeah, and then we see they did. Did they tell you how much it was? Because I got an eighth grade and I came home told me. So one was listening. Um, does anybody have any questions they want to direct on the athletic director of the report for the gifted and talented report? Here, we'll look the superintendent. Uh, the only thing I have that I'm going to highlight is that we're still looking for bus drivers. We've got one move out of the area and another one is out on medical leave right now, so we're really short bus drivers. So 
anyone else that's interested, we're looking to get and they get old Dan Katrina, Dan Katrina can train them, although it's quite a process because you got to pass five tests and then you got to drive a bus for 40 hours for practice before you take the, take the exam. But we're hurting for bus drivers right now. I will just mention that over the last few months, we haven't been able to attend this school district. The school has had some really great community events. There was the 100 year kickoff event in August or September. There was that graduate panel in October. Um, I think the veterans organization did it, but they had the <coughs> veterans program here in um, November. The senior citizens concert seemed really well attended, and there were five. This room was kind of full for lunch. And then last night we had the throwback lunch um, night, and we served about 225 people. It wasn't a fundraiser, but um, we had people come out from the 80s and 90s. We had um, parents that were in school in the 50s and 60s come out. We had some strangers come out that just heard about it and wanted to come and see what it was about. So those, they were just really great community events. Um, and then as far as the committees, the, the anniversary committee met in November to finalize the things for that event last night. And we'll meet in January. Um, January's event will be Vintage Pioneer Wear Night, so everybody get into your closet and fund your Vintage Pioneer Wear. Wear to the girls' basketball game one of those January nights. I think it's the 26th. And I guess if you want to wear like your UW Oshkosh, Whatever you can bear. It. We'll, we'll let you in. Are you sure it's going to be bear? Sure. Vintage night. Great. Lots of fun. The 85 bears left, I would do it. Move to the budget report. The athletic committee. Oh, the, oh, I'm sorry, the athletic committee. Uh, didn't really have much <coughs> this time with the town park uh, recreation committee and discuss some stuff. And that's pretty much it. And you'll update us on the agreement later. Okay, thank you. Budget. Uh, the budget fund 10, as of the end of November, had $866,506.34. That's where Riley, the owner, was talking about $4.6 million you have on June 30th. She dwindles down because we only have three months for revenue and January is our big revenue month, so 866 what we have at the end of November. Uh, payroll is about $200,000, just shy of that, and so we'll have two payrolls in December. We will have $140,000 coming in spec ed aid, and a good note is the Fund 50, which is lunch services, the food, student lunches, the payments are up on that, so the revenue is doing well in that area. Questions? We hope so. Hearing none, we'll move to facilities. Uh, the electric sign out front is working. Is that what it? It looks nice, but I think so, yeah. Um, the greenhouse changing of the panels is complete. The electrician is back today to work on the third heater in there, so that's still going. And over Christmas break, the acoustic panels guy and the sound system guy for the high school gym is going to come do a study on oh, Wednesday the 27th, I think, to study what the good solution would be for that. I think that's it for facilities. Uh, no, no school work. Yeah. 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 The only other thing that we had is back in October, we got hit with like... Oh, yeah, it's all, yeah, you tell me. And <coughs> one of the units out right out by the highway was hit for the fact that it shook the whole building. I mean, my wood windows rattled. It blew up. It took out the circuit boards for the fire system. It took out um, some of the servers and that for the computer system. Um, the but, water line in the tunnel. There's a water line in the tunnel that. Some of the phones. Yeah, some of the phones. I think. Basically, what I'm getting at is we are putting we have put in for a claim on our insurance minus the 
$10,000 deductible that we have to get reimbursed for, for that because it's well over $10,000 worth of $25,000. So the claim is in the process. We're still waiting to get other um, invoices and that, but it's in the process. So. Questions on that? Okay. Um, I'll touch on a couple more goal items under one of the agenda items. Um, something want to update us on this investable time card memorandum of agreement. Like I said, we met with the Park and Rec Committee. We uh, finalized the memorandum on our end. And now we're just waiting for the, the town to act on it. Comment question. So do we need to take action to approve our action or are we expecting well, changes? Our recommendation is we're waiting for changes because there, we were waiting on some final comments. We thought okay. we believe we were in final phase a couple times, but they were just they just haven't gotten approval yet. So, so no we action come here, we want to make sure they approve it. Okay. So we're, we're recommending hold okay. until we get it Wait for another month. Yeah. Thank you for your work on that. It's a long process. <laughs> Do you uh, have anything timely you want to talk about legislatively? So, yes, I did get an email today uh, regarding a bill. Senator uh, or Representative Whitkey and Senator Nodal and our own Joel Kitchens. Uh, are co-sponsoring a bill that would allow for certain participants of the retirement system to be rehired by participating employers without having to suspend their annuities, their pensions, for up to 60 months. Under current law, retired annuitants generally must suspend their annuity payments in order to return to work, which is a significant disincentive. As Wisconsin continues to face personnel shortages of all kinds, retired staff is a pool of qualified individuals that can help districts. The current statutory language has made this a challenge. WASB is supporting this bill and they are asking educational leaders to notify their uh, respective legislators to support this particular legislation. Tomorrow is the last day for other legislators to sign on to the bill. So this is statewide, right? Yes. Yeah. So as a non-educator, I'll speak to each X years and I'm eligible for my retirement. And I and I retire, quote retire. And then for whatever reason go back to teach. There's restrictions on that. <laughs> right. You know, like, well, if you retire, you're allowed to work 880 hours in a calendar year, and you still receive your full WRS pension. So what happens to us here at school is we have retired teachers who substitute, and then about November, they say, I'm done for the year because they've reached their quota, okay. and, they, and so we're short subs for six weeks. So I'm not a retirement expert, but I don't understand how a person teaching, coming back to the teachers, affects the integrity of the retirement fund. Is there only putting more money into the retirement fund? This has been a rule for a long time. The federal government had it for a long time. It used to affect the military all the time. And the federal level got rid of it. Wisconsin just hasn't changed yet. It's time to change. It's, it's called the old double dipping. Yeah, that's a double dipping law. Well, uh, yeah, the the double dipping is when you're, okay. What? Because you're getting, you're, you're getting money through a pension, mm -hmm. and now you're getting paid from that organization again. <coughs> but to, to the point is that the expertise is there, and they've earned their retirement, they deserve that retirement, and they want to come back more for the organization, and, and they're willing to pay them. That's right, but it doesn't hurt the integrity of the pension anything. plan. Yeah. As, right. long as, as long as their income from their, what would be their current job, as long as they're paying in for that salary in right. the WRS for their future, and right. right. Yeah. And it's not just education, but it's county workers, uh, police officers, fire, fires, and with a county, any county worker, it's, it's statewide. Well, and years ago, there was some concern that the retirees would be taking jobs away from the young people just coming out of college wanting to go into 
teaching. Well, that's not an issue. That's, that's an issue. Yeah, we've got the opposite problem now. So, well, that would be beneficial for us to ask the <coughs> If you would like, I'd be happy to contact uh, Representative Kitchens and let him know if you think this is a good thing. Are we really making a motion to support this? It is an action item. It's an action item. You can. I, Kitchens is one of the authors, so yeah, I think he supports it. It's the other. It's, it's like shocking. You got to get a hold of. This constituents we have. Can we do that? Absolutely. I mean, it's his action. I support Representative Kitchens' bill to change the what, whatever. But yeah, somebody's going to help me. Well, Kitchens wrote it, so is there somebody else we should contact? I think we sent it to everybody. Yeah. What avenues do we have? Yeah. Well, we can contact Kitchens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Here are the two people in our area. Right. I think I would. I would have, if Sue's willing, contact any legislator she's willing to contact. She right. knows how many. I mean, how many times you've been to the Capitol, Sue? Yeah. It's been a discussion. So do you have like access to a mailing list of all of them and just say a reporting from the Sebastopol School Board that on the night of such and such they approved the, the, the change of the state's office? To uh, Representative Kitchens and Senator Jacques. Or do you have, or do you have a mailing list of everybody just push all of them if it goes out to all of them? All of them. Yeah. I, I don't have You don't have that. I don't have access to that. Do you, do you have an understanding of something you would do though if they were, if we finish this motion? Is there Carol, how do you have the motion written now? I don't have it written off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll make the motion that um, we have authorized Sue today to contact any legislator that she Desired. feels Perfect. important in support of this bill. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. You know, I wish the WASB would create, I don't think they have it, like the Realtors Association has this last, they, they send the, the call to action to all the Realtors that says, here, if you support this, click here and send a message to. WASB does have voter voice. I did not see voter voice on this particular legislation. Well, and it's new today, right? I mean, it's just that. Right. Well, no, okay. others can join the bring the authors tomorrow to the last day. Ah, so it's, okay. it's, it's just, it's freshly inked. Okay, so we might see water voice on it at some right. time. Right. Okay. Right. And uh, I would just say the other thing I was yeah. looking at bills yeah. that the uh, WASB is monitoring in regard to education, and I gave up counting at 212 bills. Uh, most of those are going nowhere. Uh, the other piece that's kind of interesting right now is the discussion on Act 10 and on um, both sides of Act 10, which a lot in the media right now. So we'll see where that goes. Thank you. Voucher program is still on. It's still alive and well. Chance, I mean, getting lots of discussion on both sides. What program is that? The voucher program. But, but there's court. I mean, the argument has been filed soon. Well, with the Supreme Court, but it's been rejected. So it's supposedly supported in the lower court, but uh, that's where it's at right now. Uh, there was, I did mention in my report, there was a letter to the editor in the Pulse. Yes. Okay. Um, so at a meet and confer this fall, I think it was last spring, um, the staff wanted more information on the agenda so that they can kind of know um, what some of these topics were, do they want to attend a meeting, and the suggestion was made, could we share our school board packet with the staff? Because it is a public record anyway. So that's the question before you want to... <coughs> the agenda is posted. The, the, the agenda is posted, but sometimes the agenda doesn't. Um, I move that we the, share. The agenda the school doesn't board give a lot of detail. I move that we share the school board packet with our staff. Second. 
questions and discussion? Oh, what's the cost of that? I mean, right? We asked the oh, yes. Yeah, thank you. All right, go on. No cost. No, no the same thing we did. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. The other thing I should touch on that they had asked for um, a report after the meetings because they were only to watch the video. Sometimes they just want to know what the action was. And I have been sending them a recap of the meeting. It's they're not official minutes. It's most basically the motion and the vote. Some I might say we discussed this topic. I don't include a lot of narrative. Um, I've gotten some feedback that they like receiving that. So I think we should have a formal motion though that we continue to do that. Because I've just been doing it. Because I'll continue to do it. But I just want to don't want to come back later and say we didn't have approval to do that. Do you have any concern since those are not the official? I make a note that they are not the official meeting the minutes. They're not the official meeting minutes. There's for staff information only and not for distribution. By all, uh, usually we make motions and they go into historical records. And so every future president of the school board will have to do that. I'm not sure I like that idea. And I also don't know that you need to keep doing that. If, you know, I don't know if we need a formal motion for that. And is there any conflict that we're not seeing? Well, you don't, I'll just keep doing it then. Uh, we're just discussing. Thank you for the emotion. I mean, I don't think we Okay. Good. Um, academic and career planning. Yes, you have a document in your packet for academic and career planning, ECP. This document has been prepared by Mrs. Mulcair High School Dance Counselor. And there's a new uh, DPI requirement, PI 26, which needs approval. On, uh, on the fourth page of the document is the most recent date of board approval, which would be tonight. It's blank right now because she would punch that in there and then she'd submit it to the guy after you approve the plan. But basically it tells you the employment industry out there, family engagement, which she has her meetings with the various grade level uh, parents and what we do for post-secondary work, uh, community partners, and future employment. Is this something we've done before? No, this is new. It's a new requirement at EPI. Anybody want to brief to us for the first time? Well, you have to provide them with basic information, like about your school district, how many students you have, I mean, the high school, What's your pre-induced lunch rate? Uh, your percentage of minority students? It's all about your mission and vision. And if you go on the second page, you'll see right in the center the nice graphic with the uh, employment changes by industry. And so you're updating the students on that through our academic career planning, which Mrs. LeClaire, Mr. Phillips, and Mrs. Volker work on. Because I think the school data uh, tracking has. What I'm really interested in is career plans that are available and how they're presenting it to the kids. Like we just asked about a WTC, do they know how much money you can make as a as a welder working down by where I work? Making pretty well, you know. Right. That's, that's why they go. On. That's why they go on those field trips and WTC yeah. and those different things. And then in your course description book, you'll see the different. Uh, Every periodically in your book, it'll have your different career sequences for courses you've been taking in the high school. So that's the combination thereof. And so, what part of this is every year now we're going to start approving this thing? Is that what? That's what these guys now requiring because they're saying, hey, schools need to be more active with our ACP, which we are. But you know, like the mock interviews the seniors do, the resume building, uh, the well, just today I got a uh, flyer from WSB saying about the. Personal finance course becoming a requirement for graduation. We already have that piece in there, so we're a step ahead. But they just want to make sure all 421 school districts are on the same page. Because there's two things that could for discussion is we could approve this thing off of reporting, but I still think we have, of all the briefings we've been getting, I'm not sure we've got. We would brief on career development yet. The only have these monthly briefings. We can work that into one of them just to see how. Uh, unless the law court was here last year, remember? Yeah. Twelve months ago, or uh, well, I guess it's still it was, it was 
two weeks from now will be like next year. Right. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'll see if we can get a future one. ACPs, which I hear more about. Do we get feedback from the various industries of where they feel we're lacking or where we're doing it, where skill levels are lacking or need to be enhanced for today's workers? An example is this. Two meetings ago in NWTC, we had the, we had the head of the, the uh, nursing school, okay? She was assistant dean. And so I, you know, snarkily said, uh, how are you dealing with the new students that are coming out of nursing who are quite shocked that they have to work nights and weekends? And, and that's really, if you talk to senior nurses now, it's like, the kids coming out have no idea they're supposed to work all the time, you know, that this is a profession and da da da. And she said, well, that's not our biggest problem. Our biggest problem is students coming to us out of high school can't critically think. They can't problem solve, they cannot critically think. So now we're starting classes on critical thinking. So in the world of education, we're, it seems like we always have these walls of set. Does anybody ever tell you that students coming out of school now, because of the phone, that's decreasing their ability to problem solve because they have their phones, they don't know how to communicate anymore with people. That's the observations from the next level of schools. And so then now we have to go back and teach high school grads how to begin to problem solve a critical thing. Now, I'm not putting this on this as our own, but the question is how do we as a school pick up on that information? I personally have not had the, that opportunity to have those conversations. You know, I do, I feel like it's fair for me to say though that through all of the ACP work that those topics have been brought up. You know, so well, I, a, say, I think that's a false assumption because I think in education we live in islands. And we right. don't, we don't look at the next level up or whatever it is to see, or the industries to go back and say, are we teaching the right kind of math? Can our, can our students that are coming out of high school look at a blueprint? Or can they read manuals <coughs> to operate equipment? Because I can tell you at TC, yes, we see that problem. Well, I, yeah. I'm not trying to have a car would have something put on well, that. That would be maybe for years at some point in the future. It's reasonable to have a refund. I'm not putting it on you. No, it's okay. Well, no, and I was about to say. In that presentation, you could ask where okay. she gets her feedback. From. Sure. Yeah, yep. that's a good, sure. good yeah. suggestion. Add it to that. That's not I'm not even taking it like that, Jerry, at all. Okay. I mean, it's a good, it's a good question to ask. How are people talking with one another about what the actual work outside of these walls are and how we're contributing to that and what we aren't doing that we should be? It's a great question. Perfect question. Well, it's a great question. Is there a motion to approve the academic career planning I would ECP the and the E126 approval? No, second. Is there further discussion or questions on that? My, I will, but my other additional comment for future discussion, I've seen this as a gap since I've come through high school and my kids. I, I believe, personally, and, and you, I'm looking to be proven wrong, that there is a gap when kids leave high school and they enter something after high school, too many times our kids have a gap. You'll have kids that are great students, they jump into that next program and they're struggling. Who's looking at that gap? And, and, and other than parents and, and talking to colleges and AP exams themselves. In the academic world, and again, not on sabbatical, all of it, and in colleges, there is a gap there. I've seen it firsthand, and I want to know who's working on it, because I don't think there is. I've, I've heard lip service, but I've yet to find reality to say this is how it's happening. You know, you can have a kid take an AP class out of here and do real well, jumps into a physics program, and it, you know, he blows that class away in two weeks, and it's supposed to be an equivalent class, that is not correct. So those are, I'm just curious who's doing that. And this ACP digging into the career goals and how we send these great kids off to the workforce or, or whatever's after, 
that transition, I think, needs some attention. I think this ACP is just one piece of it. So and those, are good, discussion, those yeah. are good discussions yeah. for that right, 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 presentation. Right, right, right. I think we'll solve this problem tomorrow. 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 I think I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like how it's been some hard drafts to you. I like Wisconsin Association. Yes, uh, Kyle has included the resolutions for this year, which uh, came from two different meetings of the uh, Policy and Resolutions Committee of WASB. Uh, I will serve as the delegate uh, to the uh, delegate assembly. Uh, Willing and able. <laughs> if not, Dick will. Uh, You're very able. <laughs> that is my plan, at least. And uh, I do like to have input uh, from this group on how you would like me to vote. If there is something here among these resolutions that you say, oh no, we don't like that, uh, I would like to hear that from you. Or uh, if there's something you feel really strongly, positively about, I would love to hear that from you. I think Anything that, anybody views as a negative for this first festival that they want to discuss? Uh, keep in mind that the resolutions are often amended, uh, and there are often amendments to the amendments to the amendments. So what you see here is not necessarily what will finally be approved, but generally um, it goes according to what is here, uh, given some amendments. So it's either voted up or voted down. So if you want to discuss something, we're not in favor of that, or we think that's a really great thing, we can discuss it now. Otherwise, what we've done in the past is make a motion for the delegate to vote in the best interest of Sebastopol. So do you have any problems with any Pardon me? Do you have problems with any of these? Yourself? Do you have problems with any of these? No, I don't have problems. No, they're, they're pretty well vetted by the committee. There's a lot of back and forth on those uh, policy and resolutions committee meetings, sometimes getting quite heated. Uh, I move to uh, authorize our representative to vote on these resolutions uh, uh, as, as you see fit. Second. Question for discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Then we have the 2024-25 school calendar options. Uh, in your packet you have two calendar options for next year. One includes the spring break for the week of uh, March 24th to the 28th. The other one does not have a spring break. It has a long Easter weekend, which is in late April, April 18th through the 21st, so the Good Friday and the Monday after Easter. Uh, Good Friday's off on the spring break one. Admin team has kicked it around. We prefer the one with spring break. But it's your choice which you want to do. So the board is going to spring break. Did the, did the staff give, did, I know you it up for staff to give input on this? Yeah, I had a meeting for staff to show up and no one came to the calendar meeting. Um, the input I got was, some, well, two people told me. One said, I like spring break. The other one said, I like it done earlier in May. Okay. Um, the week of spring break on the calendar recommended with the spring break is the same week Gibraltar and Sturgeon Bay would have spring break that same week, which we haven't always aligned with Gibraltar, and that's the concern of our girls' soccer co-op team because two weeks in a row people have spring break, but this would align for what they're both recommending. Just certainly maybe approved those the other night, I don't know. I need to get an update. Someone wish to make a motion. Oh. Well, I'll second. 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 Second.
public schools for decades that were never supported where you got Thursday, Friday, and Monday off the way that's it. Now, my, my objection to it is the only people who really travel are people of me who so can do it. The rest of the kids are stuck here looking at rain, snowy weather, and can't do anything, and are bored out of them. Now, that's a stereotype, but for the most part, the vast majority of people stay at home during spring breaks, so now we have hit them with finding, finding care for their kids, because they're probably working now, the kids are going to be home, so I got to get, I got to get care for them. Where did this spring break phenomenon come from? Well, not all schools have spring break, like some of them does not. Right. Right. So what's across the rationale the, for it? What's the rationale for it? Mm -hmm. Everyone go on vacation the same week. But they don't. Well, I, all, okay. so if you, uh, I'll say it. So we yeah. have entertained this before in my time on the school board. And we let the students come in. And they did a very nice presentation on it, it allows for a, a mental break, a physical break. Now, uh, granted, we went through the practice, a lot of t And in the work world, we give spring breaks. They're all in the no, no, I'm, I'm just telling you, we went through this before, and it was, it's, I don't, I, we went through the history that schools never used to have them, and then they got worked in. And so my recommendation today is not, not take that on. I don't, I'm on the fence on that. But it, it is a cultural thing that people believe is the way to do it. And uh, we went down this path before. So this, the kids did represent, you know, you get a break, the teachers get the break, a mental health break, you know, whatever you want to say. Some travel, some don't. Uh, they get to do, you know, so they kind of went through all the benefits of this break. Right? So and we haven't received feedback from parents saying, they I don't want, no, I don't, we I don't, don't, I don't want to make it. I'm just asking. Why? No, it's a good question. I, I, in Door County, I think it's because Gibraltar many, many years ago started spring break because a lot of those people travel and the rest of us all just followed in at some point in time. So, there's always a situation where parents don't necessarily schedule their spring vacation on spring break. So you have cases where parents want to have their students out of school. We have kids on vacation every week of the year. When parents want to go on vacation, they, they go when they want to go. I mean, it, 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 yeah, there's some, there might be a couple that do, but. It's like deer hunting. Who wants to go on vacation because it's spring break and everybody does it. It's the worst thing we've That's right. <laughs> right. Yeah, for airfare and that kind of thing. I would rather get out a week early. I mean, I would June 30th than go to June 5th and not have a week off in March. I mean, there's some labor. Considerations for students. I mean, students a, ever. There's a motion on the table. Is there a motion? Okay. Was, was, there a second? Second? was there a second? Okay. Oh, yeah, there's a second. Now it's discussion, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the motion is we approve the calendar with spring break. And we had discussion. I mean, I think we had another discussion point later in, before we do the next calendar. Mm -hmm. Or we call the vote and see what happens. Well, I mean, yeah, so we have we'll vote on this now, but I mean, Three months, four months, five months from now, we have another just right. a general discussion. Yeah. We can find somebody to talk about. Mm -hmm. okay. But we're doing this calendar now for next year. Oh. 25. 25. 24, 25. Right. right. Yes, sir. Right. And uh, September 1 school start date. The DPI was giving out waivers on that pretty early during COVID. Now you can't get those waivers unless you have a solid reason to start in August. They're handing out pretty simple, and now they've tightened up their process again. Does anyone want to make a final pitch for or against spring break? If everyone's had a chance, so I'll call the question. I'll, the motion is to approve the calendar with spring break. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Let's do a roll call vote. Nay. Yeah. Nay. What is We're doing? Yeah. Carl, would you read the motion? The motion is motion by Mr. Kakmanich with a second by Mr. Eisen to approve the 24-25 school calendar with spring break as presented. With so, spring break. With spring, 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 spring break. That is the motion. So you vote yes, you're going for spring break. You vote no, you're not. Calendar key in your package. Both of them meet all the school requirements, obviously, all that and stuff. And if we, we, spring, spring, if we don't have a spring break, you get then the school out. year is over with. May 30th versus May 30th. A week later. 
So I mean, we're going to have we'll call roll call roll. I would say yeah. I would go with the first. Well, no, you're just voting on the one with spring break right now, so you're not. Yeah. Nay. With spring break. That's what yes. the motion is. Dane. Yes. Nay. Nay. What's the vote, Carl? Oh, what was your vote? No. Four and five. Two, four and five. No. That was my Four and three. Four and three. <laughs> Isaacson was a yes. Yeah, you got to enunciate over there, sir. So Is that the only one? Yeah, the only one who said yes was Isaacson and today. No. Cat. 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 Oh, you wanted it to. I thought you said that. It's four, 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 three. I guess it was me. Four, four to three. three. Yeah. 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 So now it's four three, not to have a spring break. Now we need a motion to accept the other calendar. I vote to do calendar A or B. The one without a spring break. With the May 30th May 30th ending date. Second. Wait, are we? Are we? No, we got a second. Okay, now we have a discussion. Now you got a discussion again. So, so I, I, I think it would. I would like to hear, and I think we should all hear, the argument for not having spring break, just so the staff and everyone in the families here we have a, a document why we're doing this. Well, I think one, <laughs> one consideration is the extra week in June. Some students may already have jobs like that. Okay, yeah, that's one consideration. Another consideration is that a lot of times parents, as pointed out, do not take advantage. And one of the reasons for spring break is for families to take vacations together. That usually may not happen on a usual basis. Um, so I think those are two valid reasons. And I think what Richard on his first point, I think if you have two candidates, one who can't get start the job till the second week of June, and another candidate can start at the end of May. Considering the crunch of the workforce, I think the more you're more tended to hire the person who can come to the job at the end of May than the second week. When the other guy comes next week, you're going to hire him too? <laughs> yeah, he's still so <laughs> but I mean, it doesn't give you any advantage. I, I, would, I, I would, my opinion is just that uh, to, to some people, this is a big change, and this was shocked me that we're changing. And I, I'm just one vote. I'm fine. So if we're really, as a, at the board, if we really wanted to find this out, I might recommend we. It's, in today's day and age, it's really easy to put it all, uh, 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 survey. Uh, a survey up. Yes. Put it on the internet, Facebook. Uh, have when, uh, let's go to our county do it. When does the school calendar have to be? That's just a comment. I agree with you, Dave. Let's get we some input from the people that it affects. It doesn't affect any of us around the state. Well, I think it does, half of us. I, I, well, well, I mean, you know, it does. I mean, what we can always do is pass this. I don't think we should use our personal no, whatever. I, mean, I, I think either. it. What we represent who look Okay, when you say survey. I understand that. The staff, I told. The staff had an opportunity to come and give input on the calendar, and they didn't. So I guess we can survey them. Well, wait, I'm, I'm, no, am I surveying? Is that we surveying staff I or parents? I think we're we're all, who are we surveying? I think we're off the point oh. that we're supposed to be discussing or <coughs> voting on. We're not here to discuss inputs of communication. We're, the next point in the order is, are we going to vote now to have well, school Dave, year? Dave, well, my point was on this exact Dave order. Dave is making on topic. It was that I'm recommending, and it can completely be ignored, I don't mind, but it is on topic to make this type of a change. I recommend a little more information to the school board. That's it. That's it. Let's act all the vote. When does this have to be? I'd like to hear from the students. It doesn't have to be. Well, some folks like it so they can plan ahead of time. By January would be fine. It could be table, but then tell me who you want me to serve, parents or staff, or both. Well, why don't we take action and then got to... I'd rather, not take, to I'd rather not take action than have to take actions back right. and then have to take a new action forward. That doesn't... Well, we weren't at all, we weren't concerned about that on the previous vote, that there'd be many well, people didn't want that over that time. I'm going to point out, we should call this vote. Yes. We have a motion. Carl, is there a motion second? and a second? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Uh, motion by Mr. Warwick, second by Mr. Weidman to have spring, to have to approve school calendar without spring break. So you'll be voting. Be in so you'll be voting to two days off for Easter. Approve the calendar.
with no spring break or <coughs> it's, going home, it's defeated and we don't have to. Neither of those is approved and we can send it back for part B. B. Okay. So all in favor say aye. 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 We're approving B. We have opposed. The calendar with no spring break. B. We'll, we'll, we'll call vote. Aye. Okay. No. No. Sir? Aye. No. And I'm, and I'm saying no because I would like to see it tabled and yeah. surveyed. So I don't, so what's the... Okay, tell me who I'm surveying. So what's the vote, Carl? What's the vote, Carl? What's the vote, Carl? What's the vote, Carl? It's reverse. Or three, the other one. Three, three or four. No, this is the no. same way, and they're both defeated. Oh, okay. Both calendars got defeated. I right? would yes. move to table the school calendar for 2024 I think that's to arrive until we receive mm -hmm. input from staff, parents, and passed. students. Second. Why can't you keep the second? Okay. Does everybody have the motion? Repeat it again. Repeat that again. Carl, you want to read the motion back, please? Uh, the motion by Mrs. Today, who seconded? I just didn't hear the list of people. Who seconded? Who seconded the motion? Whiteman seconded the motion. To table the this or table the issue of school calendar with additional input, input from parents, staff, and students to come before the board before a decision is made. And can that be easily done, the survey? Well, we have an answer now. Point of order. You cannot table this now because action has been taken. Both, both, both got defeated. So now you have to have a new action of saying, I want to, there's no, there's no, there's no action. There's no, both were no, so they're automatically no table. tabled. So now it's what do you want us to do between now and yeah. January? So what do you recommend? It was automatically tabled. What I don't understand is we've done this six years now and we've had this problem. Right right right. You want to survey? You want to, what do you want to do? What you want to do? I would think each family should get a vote. One, one vote per family. Sounds good. Because I don't think if a family has four kids, they should get four votes. Oh, no, 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 no. yeah. I didn't have that in this discussion. But I, may I get clarification on what you just said? Because we, we've done this for six years and approved the school calendar. Mm -hmm. um, but we've never changed the spring break before. So no, we did. That, to me, that's a, a, No, incorrect. We had no spring break during construction. We did, yeah. And that was right. the only time we didn't have it. That's, that's a good clarification. That's I, the only time. I would take exception. I would perceive. Did, did people complain? Were people like blowing their minds? People like, understood. Oh folks break. understood because it was a construction year. We were getting out of the old building as fast as possible to knock that thing down. That was right? a different story. That was a whole so, different. But, we're not doing that for the next 20 years. But, but, but I think, just, like, <laughs> Think of some things after COVID that never came back, and people really missed. I'm just saying. I know. I think. I think we asked every family for one vote, spring break or no spring break. Maybe, well, you know, for people. I think I give them the two calendars. One, one kid here, choice. one kid there, and another kid there. A lot of times your spring breaks don't line up anyway. So you, if you want to go on vacation, you go on vacation. When you want to go on vacation. People do go on vacation when they so want. So if you have spring break or not, it's. The biggest group of travelers are our teachers, which oh. is about 12 percent of our student population. And about 12. Gonna, and, and, and to think of that, and you're going to have half people so that want to spring break and half people that want to. the thing of is with the teachers, if you don't give them a spring break, they don't have an opportunity to travel because they don't get vacation. Excuse me. Teachers do not get vacation, so you don't give them an opportunity to travel. They're they're school 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 school. Summer, summer vacation. So the parents? Well, no, I know, but they're in the parents during the school year. That's the only thing. I don't care. And then their kids are working. Yeah. Well, to I point guess point. if we're surveying, I guess if we're surveying parents, families, staff are going to know that we've got a survey out there, and if they have, yeah. I don't know, one way or the other, they should. They, they should 
get to their administrator or the superintendent and express their opinion on it. That's why I had the meeting with staff and no one showed up. Actually, I had it in the library. Bridget Bowers walked in, but she's retiring, so she didn't really care about it. And then Steve was in his office, so I made him sit down with me, and he didn't well, care. Well, I just said, it's okay. I want to make sure at least you get the information, because you're the one who was, everyone else stuck with their position, and that's okay. Yeah. So I just want to make sure the survey... Uh, we'll survey. Every family gets one vote. Families, not staff, unless they're a family, unless they have a student attending. And, and staff may have just presumed that we're going to Families first, place. staff works when they work. Staff may have just presumed that we're going to have spring breaks, but they'll have an I'll communicate with them on Friday. Yeah. 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 All right, so we, we need a friendly amendment to this motion. Yes. To not take one, but to simply take a survey of the families in the Strasburg School District regarding the school calendar. Was that the motion? Well, whose motion was it? It was Sue's motion. I think it's a good motion. Parliamentary, I don't know how you do it because we don't have that on the agenda to the survey. Well, do you have the topic of school calendar? He wants a survey for the school calendar. That's so that's probably and then there's direction on why it has to happen. Okay. I think that's a, okay. So whoever made the motion has to accept it. Read that back, Carl. Good, good motion. Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> this is a good meeting to come to. Yeah. We're going to um, challenge you. We're going to have a last one here. Survey. Challenging. Now, <coughs> uh, you want to just survey families or you just want to survey to get input? No. Survey families. Survey families to get input whether or not spring break is wanted or not. And withdraw the table. I'll make your motion. And with that the decision. Survey the families, one vote per family, whatever they come up with, that's the policy. No, 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 policy, we don't have a policy, we don't have a policy on that, no. Why are just making that motion? If they want a spring break, you get a spring break. If they don't want a spring break, they don't get a spring break. So you either go to pop, you go to plan A or plan B. Carl, would you read the, the motion, the amendment? Right, they don't have to accept the amendment, though. The amendment is what we just survey families to receive input. Right, but you want to amend the amendment. Well, who's made Wait, wait don't, don't talk about that amendment. I'm talking about the amendment that Dick made yeah. to... What motion? I'm the talking about the amendment to Sue's motion to withdraw the table and survey families. Yeah. Right, that, what you just said, that's the vote. That's Dick's amendment to the Okay, we're going to vote on that one. Roll we'll call vote. Aye. 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 Now, if you want another motion that it be written in stone, we can do that. But I think, I don't, personally, I don't think we should have a motion to write that in stone. I think we need to get the feedback back Until we get the for discussion. Yeah. We've had uh, with Ms. Vanderhoof has been out on maternity leave. We are looking at possibly uh, there's conversation about adding a AP Lang to the English curriculum and just kind of fine fine tuning some of that and then uh, setting up the schedule for that moving forward. So Let's talk about AP Lit as well. Hey, it's up. You know to AP Lang. It's all language. Tell them what what that is compared to Lit. Okay, so AP Language is. Uh, uh, would be a college credit course that students can obtain. The focus of that is in nonfiction literature. The focus is on nonfiction studies uh, with a persuasive emphasis. So, um, and then AP lit literature, currently we have it as a two-year program. And when you look around the state, you look at other high schools, 
Nobody has AP Lit for two years. They only do AP Lit for one. So AP Literature, I'm sorry, but AP Literature focuses more on a, fi uh, a fictional genre um, with, with in writing and reading studies. We currently have it as a two-year uh, program. So if we would implement uh, AP language, our students would have an opportunity. Uh, the benefits would be, um, instead of only being able to earn three college credits when they leave here, they could obtain six college credits. They could focus their emphasis in two other areas, in nonfiction and in fictional studies. Kind of gives us a, a better chance to give our uh, students more opportunities post high school to uh, obtain college credit and have a, a diverse background in their English studies. Like the career mm -hmm. clusters in here, I think that's very helpful to students and parents. So thank you for doing that. Thank you, Jeff. Melissa. Yes. Any um, questions or further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carried. Um, we then have the resignation of Mr. Goldman as. Um, business manager and middle school, place, middle school football coach. So the first, first action we'll take here is a motion to accept his resignation of those two positions. So moved. Mm -hmm. Well, I questions or discussion? Second. Oh, okay. 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 there's a motion to second. <laughs> right, Carol? There's a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Now there's another part. Okay, now with Carl departing pretty quickly here because he's done in January, uh, we posted the position last Wednesday. We have no candidates as of today, so it's been out there for a week. Uh, I would like to see a motion to retain Carl on a per diem basis, take a job at Mayville School District, and then work for us evenings and weekends to keep us going while until we get the transition of finding a new person. We reach out to CISA 7, I reached out to other superintendents where even the Bush is looking for an employee that can handle this kind of workload. Um, yeah, but we need assistance in the meantime. So I recommend, and, Car and Carl's got time. I won't have time as because right now well, I'm only going to have two games to officiate and I won't be working with games as far as supervising that. So my nights will be open. I can do everything I need to do remotely because I mean, the computer that I have has all the programs. I have the Skyward so I can do payrolls, I can do the WRS, I can do W2s and things like that. Um, I can do it remotely from my house in Fond du Lac where I will be living. Um, and I may have to come back once or twice a month to, well, Chris can send me the paperwork that I need, anything that comes in. Um, everything else is already done, it's all in the system. So, at least until it gets you through, until you need somebody in here to be able to run papers and that. Um, so I move to retain Carl Voltman with per diem uh, as long as he's able until we are transitioning to a full-time replacement here as a business manager. I'm sorry. Questions or discussion? Nikki, do you have questions? So sorry. is there any legal implications? I mean, what do we classify Carl then as? We classify him as a consultant. He's a salaried employee until he uses up his resignation. So yeah, I'd have him as a consultant or a third party, kind of like CISA 7 does work for us. What do you want to do? So we would do it on a contract, contractual basis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of like our school site, we do it on a uh, per day basis for him as well. Be very similar to that. So, I mean, we just had this discussion after yeah. hours last night. Yeah. The, well, before the basketball game, but after your school day yesterday, because okay. we've been waiting for someone to apply. Yeah. What kind of duration? I mean, how long? I mean, this could go on. Dave's motion says as long as Carl is able. I, to, I said purposely until we have a full time in place. I said that for a reason. Yeah. We don't know when we'll get a candidate. Right. What concern do you have with your question? No, no I'm just saying it's Carl's concern. Oh, well, well don't, don't worry about Carl. Quit whatever the hell he wants. Don't worry about Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he can. He just quit. He, I, mean, I mean, he has that freedom of choice. That's why we need to brought the idea up I guess. because no, you don't find a candidate for a year. Are we going to retain Carl for a year? Um, <laughs> well, he won't be bad. Well, I think we're going to have to do something for that. We're, we're going to have to do something. So we're going to have to figure something out. Thinking back over Richard's question. 
we're going to get somebody. Well, here. but in other industries, you can go go to your accounting firms or something. Are there firms out there that you will pay, and they will come in here on a temporary basis, and, and they're expert in that area. You assume they are to take over this position until such time as you find somebody. And and so I, you know, I don't know. In a month, Carl may say this is too much for me. And then we're up at, so I think in the meantime, as a backup, we, we should be looking for other resources out there from a temporary service that is expert in this area to come in. That's why I started with, that's why I started with CISA 7 last week. And that's why I reached out to the other superintendents. And that's why we're doing it. We need to make a motion to authorize him to go ahead with that in case so he doesn't get another. Oh, we're, 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 that's, what, that's what we're doing. That's not hiring. Hiring. No, no, no. Engaging in a contract or somebody. That's how we got our CISA 7 score right now. Keep in mind that school finance is very different from finance in what? other industries. I so. And right now, it is very difficult to find school business managers. And CISA 7 has a new person starting with them on yes. January 2nd as well. So well, CISA 7 does take care of the 35 or 37 school districts in Northeast Wisconsin. So I mean, we'll keep hunting. So I guess I misunderstood. What is CISA 7? Nothing at this point. Right, Jerry, on that, on, on that, like, like Kyle said, on that note, they're just getting a new person. Within a couple of months, he'll be, because the person that they're getting is knowledgeable in all this stuff, but he's got to get his feet wet in CISA. Hopefully within a couple of months, he'll be able to provide service provider, not if I don't want to do it, I can't do it, or things like that. But for right now, to get us through pretty much January, because you got to get the mm -hmm. W2s done, you got to get the yeah. WRs done, you got to get done. I, will, I can do that. I can get you through that critical time. Beyond that, we'll figure, you know, then we'll figure it out. Yeah. One other consideration, too, is we may down the road start thinking about farming up payroll uh, to an accounting firm. Uh, that would free up a lot of time. There. And that's an essential. Right, that, that takes about four days of Carl's month, right? Yeah, four of his 21 days is payroll. Correct. Yeah. But at this point, go ahead, Keith. Well, to, to, my, to my recollection, Carl, you did not come from another uh, school, right? I, when I came in, I was... You, you came from a private industry, correct? I had no knowledge or experience in school finance. So I just want to speak to Sue's point about if there's not business managers out there. There are accountants out there, there are business related people that could learn as Carl did with right. CISA trainings. Right. Uh, you put a lot of work into uh, a lot of extensive learning this. Yes. Uh, right. It, it, it is its own animal. Yeah. So I'm just saying. Go ahead and we, 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 some go ahead. Can walk I'm just saying. Be ready to run yes. the next day. Yeah. Well, and very, very great point. And uh, to me, for this, we've done this before. In our last two transitions, we brought someone with experience, or temporarily hired, however you figured out the money, and we paid them a fair wage to help our transition. Well, so we're just doing it again. Yeah, we've done this before. Yeah. yeah, my first day on the job here seven years ago, first thing I got was our bookkeeper resigned. Yeah. And I gave him two weeks. And we got Cindy Visby came back, and then we hired Carl, and That's Cindy really helped. This was. Yeah, not Cindy trained him for I'm a while. Saying, and if we look back, but we might get an accountant and think about it. We don't know what we're going to get, but we've got no one that has it today. It sucks because so Carl just learned everything now. And now he's <laughs> it does. So we prepped him for his new job. And then so he owes us a finder to his new yeah. job. That's what I said, too. Yeah, I just had kind of waiting for that. Part of this is thank you. We're going to miss you. You've done a great job. I think Carl owes us some volunteer. I mean, all the volunteer coaching and refereeing and all that kind of stuff doesn't count. Per game zero. Carl, would you read the motion back, please? <laughs> As you recall it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> motion by Dave, Mr. Kakamans, made with second by Mr. Isaacson to hire myself on a per diem basis to handle the business manager duties on a temporary basis until a new person is found. Point of order should be contractor that you do not hire. Kind of 
contract. Okay. Contract. Okay. Right. Are, there, are there further questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All in favor say aye. Um, then we've got first reading of a couple of policies which we will take together. I would move to approve a first reading of revised policies 8310, public records, 8500, food services. Second. Are there questions or discussion on those? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That concludes our regular business. I'll look for a motion for the board to be in the executive session. Move to um, go to executive session. Move to go into the executive session. Second. Aye. 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 Motion carried at 8.55 p.m. Special board meeting on November 20th, 2023. We're approved in closed session. Our next regular meeting is January 17th. No, that's uh, during the WSP yes. So I would recommend pushing it back a week. To the 24th. Because January would be pretty quick to go January 10th. We come back to school in the summer, right? 24th. Yes, that's what we do by recommendation. I'll make a motion to move the Board of Education uh, meeting to January 24th, 2023, 17th. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, we should set a January meet and confer date. I, I don't know why, but I think we've been days for some reason. Yes. I don't know why you do that. It's really interesting that I have basketball practice. Well, when do you have basketball practice? Do you have any weight practices? Thursday, the 11th, I have a 5.30 practice. Thursday, 11th, Thursday, the 11th for me and for anybody that can make it. I can do that. When is it? Thursday, Thursday the 11th of January. At what time? What time do we do uh, that at 3.40? 3, 3, 3.40. Our business. 